In this video, I'm going to review some project helps for Module 6 for Word. In your project, you're going to have a text box that's similar to the one here at the screen. And what it wants you to do is set an absolute position. So what we want to do is I have this selected, which gives me this box. And there are a few ways to get to the layout options here. But when I click that, I want to go ahead and click See More. And then it's going to go ahead and give me the position settings here. It has a lot of these things preset, but what you want is to look for vertical or horizontal, whichever one it might be. And then uh, you want to set the spacing here. So if it's 2.5, you could do that. And then below, wherever it might be, the margin, the page, the line, we'll keep it at page and we'll go ahead and click OK. And notice it went ahead and dropped that for me. Let's go ahead and look at this here, this text right here. One of the things it's going to ask you to do is to convert text to table. And what we want to do is go ahead and select all of the information here in our table. Now, if you look carefully at the bottom of my selection, you notice that I've actually selected too much. If you do that, when you go to uh, convert the text to table, it's not going to give you the correct amount of columns or rows. So you want to be careful just to select what you need for this. And so with that, we'll go ahead and click insert here at the top. We'll click table convert text to table and you just want to make sure that it's all right there let's go ahead and add some color to this so we're on the with the table selected we're on the table tools design tab and let this will be a little bit easier to look at now our header here at the top uh, because this table is split if I were to print this off this header would only appear on page one so something you might be asked to do on this project is to go to the layout here and what you want to do is have your cursor here in the this top uh, header row so that you can click repeat the header rows and notice it went ahead and it put that at the, on the second page on top. Let's go ahead and sort this table. So I'm going to go ahead and select the entire table here by clicking this little box. And what we want to do is click sort. Now, this what we're going to do is a multi-level sort because it's going to have you do it by a few things. So we'll go ahead and do sort by school first and ascending. And then let's go ahead and look at grade 9 here and we'll leave it in ascending as well. And then that way we have a sort for the school by alphabetical order and then the grade level by ascending as well. And let's see what happens here. I went ahead and put that into alphabetical order and it's the second sort is going to be by the grade. You don't want to forget about your auto fit settings here. You could do contents, window, or column width. If we click contents, notice it went ahead and shrunk the table for us. Let's go ahead and talk about doing a mail merge. Let's go to the mailings here at the top. This mail merge is the biggest part of this project. So we'll click mailings. We're going to go ahead and click start mail merge here. And then what you want is the step-by-step -step mail merge wizard. This is going to make your life so much easier in real life. And you want to go ahead and just begin as you go through the instruction set to just do what it tells you to do. So we're here at step one right now. And I believe it tells you to keep it a letter. But whatever it tells you to do, make sure you uh, select that and click next. And for this, you'll go ahead and keep your document that they've given to you. So we'll click next. And then what we're going to end up doing is having to type out a new list. So we'll go ahead and click type a new list. And down here, we'll go ahead and click create. Now, it's going to have you add and remove some columns and fields. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll keep the title. Uh, but let's go ahead and remove the zip code. Maybe that doesn't matter. We'll click delete. We'll click yes. Step three is going to have us. Uh, what we're going to do is have, have to create our own list. So we'll go ahead and click type a new list. And we'll click create. And in this section, it's going to have us customize our columns. So let's go ahead and click customize columns because ultimately what we want to do is delete some of these lines. For example, let's say we didn't want title. We'll go ahead and click delete and we'll click yes. Maybe you don't care about the work phone number. We'll click delete. And then it's going to have you add some random field. Let's go ahead and click back in title. Let's say we didn't mean to delete that. We'll click OK. And then it's all the way down here. Let's go ahead and move it up so that's the very first one again and we'll click OK and then what you're going to do is be given a, a list of information so I'm going to go ahead and type some information just to populate this list and then you're going to use that list within this document now before I click OK I want you to know that I'm hitting the tab key after I type in the information so it just brings me to the next column and then it's going to have you save this information you can save this here. It's just going to save it in the My Data Sources, and, and this Word document will reference that list. We'll go ahead and, and just click project, type in project, click save. 
and we'll click OK. All right, now we're going to go ahead and take the information that we just uh, typed in, and we're going to have Word start placing that information in our document. Now, for name, this might be a little bit confusing because we also have address, but what I want to do is just put the greeting line here. It'll start off with dear. You could put two, whatever you choose, and then you have the different ways to, to put it. So right here it just says to Brendan. You can click through and choose what you need to to Mr. Sinclair, and we'll go ahead and click OK. Now, if you look here carefully, notice that the placeholder that I had typed in name is still there. You're going to want to make sure you delete that text after you put in your your greeting line or your address block. So let's go ahead and do the address block next. We'll go ahead and click address block and again you're going to go ahead and select whatever the instructions tell you to do. We'll go ahead and click OK. Now this looks a little bit weird because we have two different things repeating the information but this is just an illustration. Again we want to delete this and then you have other fields. You might be asked to go through a place here in the document and go ahead and maybe just put the state of someone or uh, a custom field that you guys make in your project. As you go through the project steps, one of the things that might ask you to do is uh, to make some changes to email merge. So here, if we click edit recipient list, um, it might have you sort it by company name or another field and all you need to do is just click that and it will sort it or you can use this little drop down here to do that and we'll click OK and it will notice it went ahead and it changed our first preview because now the B was before M and then let's talk about the if then statement so we're still on our mailing tab and what we want to look at in the right and insert fields is the rules and you have a lot of things here and these these features are very helpful, but in your project, I think you have an if then else. And so we'll go ahead and change this to city and we'll keep it equal to, and what we'll type in is Tampa. And then what you wanna do is this first part, insert this text if it's true. We'll go ahead and type the text, come see us play ball. And then otherwise we'll go ahead and put visit us next the next time you are in Tampa. We'll click OK. So notice that here, because the city was Tampa, it went ahead and put that, but the very next entry, it says visit us the next time you're in Tampa because the city is Cape Coral. And as you click through the steps, the last thing you want to do is click edit individual letters, and we'll go ahead and click all. And that's actually going to open it up in another document. And what it has you do in, for this project is hit control a or you can just select all the text so control a will select all and then if you hit control c it'll copy everything that's in those documents and then what i think it, it wants you to do is to go to a, a new brand new page that has nothing on it it'll have you paste what you've copied into this document and then what you want to pay attention to is it says there should only be five pages there should only be six pages so for this i had copied an extra line and i just want to make sure i delete back to where there's only six pages for this or five pages, whatever the instruction set tells you.